On September 22nd of 2010, Tyler Clemente jumped off the George Washington Bridge that would ultimately cause his death. This was due to an unfortunate betrayal on behalf of his roommate, Darren Robbie. He was just 18 years old. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz and today we're going to be discussing the death of Tyler Clementi for our Crimes on Pride Month. If you haven't already subscribed, I highly recommend you do so. Click that red subscribe button somewhere down there. I kind of awkwardly point at wherever it is down below. Don't mind me, I'm just unique. Um, and don't forget to turn your bell notification on all that way you know whenever I upload. So Tyler Clementi was a very bright and talented young man. He was a violinist and he also participated because of him being a very accomplished violinist. He was in the Bergen Youth Orchestra. Now Tyler would be accepted to Rutgers University after he graduated from high school and it was a few days before he left for university that he came out to his parents. Now his father fully supported him. His mother, on the other hand, didn't fully accept him. And this was mainly because she felt betrayed that Tyler didn't confide in her about the fact that he was gay for years and that she was sad and she was very quiet when she processed him coming out to her. She also said she couldn't fully acknowledge the fact that he was a homosexual due to her activity in the Evangelican church and the teachings of homosexuality as being a sin in that church. So Tyler felt really rejected by his mother because she couldn't fully accept him. After she had a conversation with Tyler before he went to Rutgers, he ended up crying. They ended up like telling each other they loved each other. They ended up hugging it out. Like she tried to accept him for who he was because he was her son, but she just, that part of him, she couldn't fully accept. Now, they would spend the remainder of the week before him going to university spending time together. And when he went to Rutgers, they would only speak on the phone. Obviously, if you've never been to college, if you know who your roommate's going to be before you go, you try to look them up. Well, this is exactly what happened. Tyler's roommate, Darren Ravi, tried to find out information about Tyler prior to going to Rutgers and meeting him. And when he did look up Tyler, he would eventually find some... Things that he just wasn't, we're not, I'm not going to say okay with. He just like, this would be a bit, a big part as to like what Darren Ravi does to him. So Darren would end up finding communications that Tyler had on sites such as Just Us Boys, which is a pornographic site chatting messaging board for homosexual men. And after he found this, he ended up tweeting on Twitter saying that he found out that his roommate was gay. Um, Tyler also would look into who Darren Ravi was and he would ultimately read the postings that Darren put on Twitter. That kind of sucks. But now after they moved in together at Rutgers, they rarely talked to each other. Darren would text his friends about Tyler and he merely just said that he was shy and awkward. Tyler really just enjoyed the fact that Darren just left him alone. He's only, he'll only leave him alone for a little bit. Now on September 19th and 21st, Tyler told Darren that he wanted their room for the evening. And on the 19th, Darren would end up meeting Tyler's friend, of which is the reason why he wanted to be alone. And in their room is he wanted to spend some quality time with his friend. Now Darren was worried about theft. He was worried that his computer would be stolen and that his computer would be left in a state in which he could view the room through his webcam, through a webcam stream, if there was any of these issues happening. Now, because of this, now Darren left. He ended up going to Molly Way's room, which also lives in the same hallway as Darren and Tyler. I bet you guess what would happen, right? I bet. Instantly I had cringe face when I was reading this because man, that's just it's wild and it's absolutely like, why would you do this? Why? Darren and Molly watched the stream via his iChat on Darren's iMac and he ended up seeing Tyler and his friend kissing. Later, when Molly turned on the camera to look again, it wasn't just her, it was her and four other people that were watching this live stream. Now, during the second viewing in particular, Molly saw Tyler kissing this man in the room and both of their shirts were off. Now, on September 20th, Tyler would see what 
Darren put on Twitter. And his tweet said, Roommate asked for the room till midnight. I went to Molly's room, turned on the camera. I saw him making out with a dude. Yay. What a dick. What a dick. Now, after this is when Tyler requested a single room. And this was via an online request at 4 a.m. on September 21st. Also, on the 21st, Darren texted his friends about a viewing party to watch Tyler and his friends and how to remotely view it. And he sent them the link. He also put this in a tweet. He even went as far as saying, anyone with iChat, I dare you to chat me between 9.30 and 12. Yes, it's happening again. Darren then turned on the webcam to specifically be like, he turned the camera on his iMac to specifically be pointing towards Tyler's bed. When Tyler returned home, he noticed that the camera was changed and then he then texted his friends that he unplugged the power strip that was connected to the computer. This would prevent any further streaming during his date. Now, Darren said that he disabled the camera himself by putting it on sleep mode, which is a lie. Absolute lie. That same day, on the 21st, Tyler would complain to a resident assistant and two Rutgers officials about what Darren did. The RA of the wing ended up testifying that Tyler was uncomfortable and shaky when they met around 11 p.m. that night. Also in the RA report, it said that Tyler requested to have a room change and asked for punishment to happen to Darren because of what he did. Also in an email to the RA, um, that was made after the meeting. Tyler described both of the viewing incidents of what happened. He also went on to quote Darren in regards to his tweets that he put on Twitter and how he felt that his privacy had been violated and that he was extremely uncomfortable to share a room with somebody who would have such wildly inappropriate behavior. Tyler also, from detail, went into explicit detail about how Darren did a, like, what Darren did on a on a Yahoo message board in Just Us Boys about the complaints he filed through the university about like about Darren. So he shared details about what Darren shared about Tyler and he used all this against Darren. Within a few hours of all of this happening, yeah, Darren returned to the dorm room and Tyler returned to the dorm room as well. And he and Darren were there for less than an hour. Now on the 22nd of September, Tyler left his dorm room. He went to the food court, he got food, then he headed towards the George Washington Bridge. He would then post on Facebook at 8.42 p.m., jumping off, well, jumping off the GW Bridge. Sorry. Tyler did have a suicide note that he left in his dorm room. Um, that and his documents on his computer were never released to the public or to the defense team during Darren Robbie's trial. This was because... Tyler's suicide was not directly related to the charges against Ravi, even though they should be. Um, Tyler's cell phone, his computer, his wallet, and his car were all found either near or on the bridge. Tyler's body would be found in the Hudson River, just north of the bridge, on September 29th. His cause of death was drowning, and his body had significant blunt impact injuries on his torso. Now, soon after his death, the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network would come out saying that there was a heightened media attention when it came to suicides in Jersey, Texas, California, Indiana, and Minnesota. And there was also four other young adults that committed suicide due to being taunted because of their homosexuality in the same month that Tyler Clementi died. So I bet you're wondering what happened to Darren Ravi and Molly Way. Darren Ravi and Molly Way were charged with two counts of invasion of privacy on September 28th of 2010. Darren Ravi was also also received two additional counts for, for the September 21st viewing attempt. On April 20th of 2011, Darren was found guilty on all 15 counts against him. Now, Molly Way ended up avoiding prosecution because she took a plea deal. Darren, which this blows my mind, he only sent, was sentenced to 30 days in jail, 300 hours of community service, and a $10,000 fine. And he had to go through counseling on cyberbullying and alternative lifestyles. Darren only spent 20 days in jail. Darren Ravi only served 20 days in jail after filming his roommate during a sexual encounter and posting online and having viewing parties about it. And this ultimately caused his roommate's death. Hmm. Hmm. What are your thoughts? Because uh, I'm sorry for me. 
I think that's bullshit. So what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments down below. I would love to know what you have to think about this because man, I, this hurts my brain, hurts my brain. He got away with all of that. And so did the, so did the woman. Like, just let me know what you, what you think in the comments down below. Um, I would really love to know and I'll see you guys in another video.